inside that vial, a shot at ending the pandemic. But as vaccines keep rolling out, AstraZeneca is hitting bumps in the road once more. What they have done time and time again is continue to shoot themselves in the foot. Just yesterday, AstraZeneca boasted in a press release that its vaccine is 79% effective at preventing symptomatic COVID-19 and 100% effective against severe or critical disease. Trouble is, that message may have included outdated information, according to the U.S. Data and Safety Monitoring Board. They got concerned and wrote a rather harsh note to them and with a copy to me. The focus is AstraZeneca's U.S. Phase 3 trial data. The drug maker hasn't revealed what details are under scrutiny, but said today it hopes to disclose more data in the next 48 hours. We're not quite sure what that outdated information is. So it's hard to it's hard to evaluate from the outside how concerned we should be. It's not the first time the company very publicly faces such questions. An initial lack of clinical data on seniors was later resolved. Then there were reports of rare blood clots. Regulators are still investigating but say there's no increased risk. Now this, the latest issue prompting Health Canada to again say at this point in time, we, of course, um, believe that the benefits of the AstraZeneca vaccine continue to outweigh the risks. At this Toronto pharmacy, they're giving the AstraZeneca shot and they're fully booked. People were really hesitant with, the, with all the media about uh, the blood clots and things that are happening in Europe, but I think now they're more comfortable with it. I, I'm reassured everything's going to be fine. With a vaccine rollout monitored this closely and carefully, there could yet be more scrutiny. The world is counting on those shots. Thomas Dagg, CBC News, Toronto. Okay, now we have infectious diseases specialist Dr. Susie Hoda joining us. So what's your, your bottom line? Let's, let's start with AstraZeneca. Do, do you have any doubts as to whether it is safe or effective? Listen, I, I kind of see this as a series of communication mishaps that have been unfortunate um, with AstraZeneca. And, you know, this latest one, as far as I can tell, doesn't show any problems with uh, new safety concerns. And I find that a little bit reassuring. It looks like it's more around the efficacy estimates from this latest clinical trial. So, you know, I think it's important to recognize it doesn't change what we've already learned about this vaccine, which supports that it's a perfectly good option for Canadians in terms of safety and efficacy. And, and what about the, the four-month dosing interval? I mean, are, are, we, are we just guessing at this point or, or how long until we're, we're confident with an answer on this? Well, I think we have to wait for some real life evidence uh, to come out. You know, there's no clinical trials data to support the inter interval in the dosing. And we know from other vaccines that we can space them out months, sometimes even years apart, and that can even actually make them work better. But that doesn't necessarily mean we can extrapolate that to COVID-19. And so as we're in a race to try and protect Canadians uh, against surges in cases, you know, we have to think about what protection do we have with a single dose. Uh, for most people, our, our experience so far it seems to suggest that it's moderate, if not good, protection. But really watch what's happening with some of these subpopulations like the elderly and right. the immune compromised right. um, to see if we need to tailor our approach to try and suit what will work best for them. We'll keep watching. Dr. Hoda, thank you.